Good morning, people. My name is Brian Alzru, and welcome to Barbells and Bushcraft, where in this video, I'm gonna answer the question that gets asked every single log cabin build video, and that is what tools am I using? But I'm not only gonna just answer that and tell you guys whether I would recommend it or whether you actually need it or not. What I'm gonna do is down in the description box down below, I am going to leave you links to every single one of them, as well as timestamps, so that if you guys need to come back and reference this video, you don't need to listen to my dumb face for the entire video to find what you're looking for. Now, before we get in that video, that pack that you guys saw, obviously I didn't show you everything that I put in there during the intro, we're gonna cover that for this video. However, that thing ends up weighing about 70 pounds and I need to walk just under a mile to the build site. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, the build site is right next to a river, so that means I have a very steep decline down to the build site. And then an average cabin day for me is about seven hours of work before I start getting tired and I cut it when I start getting tired because when you're dealing with things as sharp and as dangerous as what I'm doing, you don't wanna make a lot of mistakes. That said, after a long day of working on the cabin, that really sharp decline is now an incline and that pack does not feel any lighter. And it's become something that I've learned to love to dread. Also a couple things I'm not gonna mention during the video is that on that pack, I do have forms communication in a walkie talkie and I always have my cell phone with me. And I also have a small medical kit that has things like tourniquets and a quick clot type of substance. Um, just because with the type of work that I'm doing, if I get hurt, I'm very far away. No one's gonna hear me yell. Uh, I need to be able to handle it and then try to get help to me as soon as possible. So I am prepared for that situation. Which seems like an appropriate segue to talk about axes. Now, I've broken these tools up into a couple different categories so it'll be easier for you guys to understand as well as come back and find if you do want to reference it. But in these videos, you guys have seen me use three different axes, the most versatile of which you guys have actually made fun of me for using because it is a Scandinavian forest axe. Now, I am a fan of Granford Brooks axes. Um, I haven't found anything better. Uh, people say Wetterlings is a very, very close second. However, uh, I've never used them. I've only used these and I absolutely love it, especially the Scandinavian Forest Axe. Now, I know a lot of people say this too short for me and to be honest with you, it is a 25 inch axe, which means that it goes from my armpit out to about my palm, which is just about the length that you want if you're carrying something into the woods and using it for a lot of different tasks. I have used this more on my log cabin build than I have for anything else as well as any of my bushcraft little with me stuff, this thing is the best thing going for me. If I was gonna buy one ax, this would be it. However, I don't only have one ax. I also have a felling ax, which again is grants for Brooks, and the difference between the smaller Scandinavian forest ax and a felling ax is of course the length. The Scandinavian forest ax is 25 inches long, this baby, is actually 35 inches long. I had a 31, or I have a 31 inch felling ax, but in that last video on that uh, Widowmaker tree that you guys saw, super dead, super punky, especially when I was chopping, um, and the actual beard, the tip of the beard broke off. So I ended up getting a refund for this last week, quickly ordered a second one because I wanted to get right back to work on the cabin, and uh, unfortunately ordered the 35 inch handle instead of the 31 inch handle. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna work out yet, but in a future video, I will definitely let you guys know. Now, this ax, I pretty much only use for felling trees as well as when I start making the saddle copes in the logs. I use this ax because the longer handle gives me more leverage as well as the heavier head on it allows me to just remove more material faster. So definitely saves me some time. It is worth walking into the build site with this thing for me. Um, however, there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't get every single thing done uh, that I am doing with the smaller Scandinavian forest ax. And then of course, the third type of ax type of tool that you guys see is my Tomahawk by CRKT. And I absolutely love this thing. I put this thing through the paces and it has held up. It's a very, very cheap tool uh, for what it is. And guys, the reason why I went with a Tomahawk instead of like a traditional ax or hatchet um, is because you can actually take this thing off and just use the head more as like a splitting wedge and for other things in the field. Plus, I kind of like Tomahawk. The problem with Tomahawk is that it has a straight handle. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to take the head off of it. Um, however, that is pretty rough on your wrist as well as some people's elbows because you don't have the nice little ergonomic. Er er ergonomic, er you guys know what I'm saying. Curved handle that makes chopping a lot easier and a lot more fun 
on your wrist. But I would highly recommend all three. However, if I was only going to choose one, it would be the Gransford Brooks Scandinavian Forest Axe. Knives. So there are two knives that you guys have primarily seen me use on my channel and they're both made by Benchmade, which is a very, very nice knife company who was cool enough to send me out some blades, which I absolutely love. The first of which is this folder with a little bit of a Tonto uh, tip on it. I absolutely love this thing and is with me all of the time. It's, it's in my pocket constantly. The second is the Benchmade Bushcrafter, which is the, one of the knives that they sent out to me and is absolutely wonderful. I adore this knife. A lot of people complain about the handle that is too small or it's blocky, but I really haven't found that to be the case. Um, the blade, the actual geometry of the cutting edge is so wonderful and it stays sharp. So all that you really need to do is strop it. To say I use this thing constantly is actually an understatement. It is always on me and I've never actually had to sharpen it yet. I literally just strop it all the time and it keeps that edge. It is a wonderful knife that I cannot recommend either one of these enough. Now when it comes to blades, I like to be redundant. So also in my bag, I will always have some sort of Swiss Army knife or multi-tool uh, that can do a couple of other purposes. And then something I need to talk about is the draw knife that you guys see me using all of the time. So this is a timber tough draw knife. Again, links to all this is down in the description below. Um, and would I recommend this? I bought it off Amazon. It is a pretty cheap tool. It has done everything that I've asked of it. It shows up without an edge, so you need to be able to put an edge on it. If that is something that you do not know how to do, then that is something you're going to have to learn before you can actually use the tool effectively. Uh, I did not do a spectacular job because I'm not spectacular at that, so I do need to resharpen this thing pretty, pretty regularly um, because the geometry of it just isn't spectacular for, for what I'm using it for. Uh, for the price, it is not bad for getting involved in this type of thing. It works great. Uh, is it a very, very professional tool that I would recommend everyone should get? Probably not if you are more advanced than I am. And if I could buy again, I probably would have bought nicer once than uh, the cheap version. And I'm gonna have to buy again a, a better one. But again, if you're just looking to get into it, it's a pretty cheap way to find out if this is something that you like doing. Saws. The search for a good saw has been a tough one for me. I actually started out with this Baco Laplander, which is just a little tiny folding pocket saw, and I cannot say enough good things about this. If you're just gonna carry something around for camping or just little tiny arboring tasks, this thing is absolutely amazing. It holds up. I highly, highly recommend it. However, if you're gonna build a log cabin, you probably need something a little bit bigger. So my first reaction was to go with this Boreal, I think that's how you say it, folding bow saw. And again, this is great for a little bit bigger task, and it's easy to hike in with, because if you just unfold it, and then snap this little guy. <laughs> then you have a bow saw and it's easy to carry in. Like I said, the problem is uh, this again, didn't work very well for the log cabin. I would highly recommend it if you're doing a little bit larger tasks uh, in a camping situation or a small like survival type of situation. This is awesome. Uh, but building a log cabin, you're gonna need a little bit more than this. So then literally a billion people told me to go with a silky saw and I gotta say, the teeth and the cut, this is a Japanese pull saw instead of a push saw or a cross cut saw. And this is absolutely amazing for removing material. I love this saw. The only complaint that I have about it is that because it has this straight handle, uh, I have a lot of problems getting a lot of down pressure for some of the larger logs. Also, I probably should have went larger. They do sell an even bigger saw than this called the Katana, which looks absolutely ridiculous. But, uh, for sawing the level of logs that I am doing, that probably would have been a smarter move. However, this guy has done really, really well for me. However, still not my top pick for saws if you are building a log cabin. For me personally, and again, I don't know what I'm talking about, but for the tasks that I've been doing building log cabin, I have found that a regular old Stanley sharp tooth, uh, just hand saw has worked absolutely perfect for what I have asked of it. I started out with a shorter one. I think it was a 15 inch saw and Honestly, a lot of the logs I'm dealing with are 12 to 15 inches diameter, and that saw is too small. It makes the cutting very tedious and very long, as you guys saw in that one video, where I cut long ways through a log, and it took me six and a half hours to cut one log. Not my best day. 
So I have upgraded to the 20 inch version, which is even better. However, I think they do make a 24, which probably would work even better for the larger diameter logs. However, I'm not gonna invest in another saw. I'm sticking with this 20 inch. And I will say out of all the saws that I've used for building the log cabin, this one has been the best. I would not take it camping with me. I would not place it in my pack for a weekend hiking trip. Uh, that would definitely be the Baco Laplander or the Silky Saw or even that Boreal Folding Bow Saw would be better in for any of those situations. But this, for log cabin build, has been great. Augers. Now, these are very, very important because you have to be able to drill holes through the log so you can insert pegs or if you're gonna do mortise and tenon joints where you need to make a square hole inside of a log, you need to be able to drill the holes and then chisel that excess material out. So these are highly, highly important. However, if you're doing a project all by hand like I am, you don't have as many options. So what people do is this is called a scotch eye auger, which basically just means it has this little piece of pipe, for lack of a better term, uh, welded on the top and then you whittle down a stick, you place it through and now you have a hand auger, right? Now you're able to do this with virtually any type of bit if you have the welding skills. Unfortunately, I do not have the welding skills so I had to buy these and they are extremely expensive for just having stupid little drill bits. So if you do have welding skills or a friend with welding skills, I don't have friends either, but if you do have one, just go buy some bits that you need. This is a one inch bit, this is a 5 16 bit. I need a half inch bit that I'm, I'm trying to work on, the friend and the welding thing. But if you can just weld in a little piece of pipe on the top and you can carry these into the field with you, as long as you can whittle down a stick, you have an ability to drill through things. Very important, chisels. So if you're gonna be doing a project like this, you're gonna need some wood chisels just to remove material like I talked about with either mortise and tenon joints or smoothing out things or they just come in handy. Now, I went on Amazon and just bought a real cheap Stanley set of different size chisels. So the largest of which is a one inch chisel. I actually haven't used these smaller ones yet because I'm building a large log cabin. So I haven't really needed them for any detail type of work. So the one inch chisel is the smallest that I've gone. However, uh, if you're going to do a big project like this, you're going to need bigger timber framing chisels. Which brings us to another super, super important part of this entire log cabin build for me, which is this Robert Sorby two inch timber framing chisel. And this thing is sharp as like a Ginsu knife. In fact, if you do not put anything on it and you just put it in your bag, it will cut right through your bag. And uh, I showed you guys a couple weeks ago how I had cuts on my fingers and that was from this. Uh, I picked it up and it slipped out of my fingers and just fell like that and I bled like a pig. This thing is an amazing tool and honestly, I could have built the log cabin with one auger, that Scandinavian forest ax, this and probably that one handsaw. Literally, this thing has been super, super important and I absolutely love it. However, I did ask people in one of the videos if I needed a different type of chisel, one with a sweep since I'm making those curved sado notches and people told me indeed I did. By the way, this is my sweet Amazon box sheath that I made, which you can get for $7.99 at the Brian Alzeru sheath making store. But people told me that I needed a sweep chisel or a curved chisel and this is a 2.5 inch bare uh, sweep chisel that I got from Lee Valley Tools. If you guys are interested in this timber framing type of stuff, definitely check out LeeValleyTools.com because they have a lot of the stuff that you're going to be looking for that's really, really tough to find elsewhere. But this tool uh, has proven pretty much worthless for me. I've used it a little bit trying to get behind it, but um, I don't think it was necessary at all. It was a buy that I wish I could take back. Uh, I really get everything done with that flat Robert Sorby chisel and between my tomahawk and the Scandinavian, Scandinavian forest ax, uh, I'm able to get all of the smoothing out that I needed. I don't actually need this. Now, my copes and my joints are not nearly as pretty as a lot of people. So if you are good at this, this might be something that you need or something that I may need in the future when I get better. But right now at my level, it's overkill at best. So. I personally don't need it, maybe you do. All right, let's jump into some randomness that you guys see that I just need to explain what some of these things are. Number one, I use wedges all of the time and they are in every single bag that I carry, whether I'm doing firewood, whether I'm building a log cabin, whether I am traveling around, I keep wedges in my bag because there's not much better tool for moving big, heavy things. And in my world, no matter what it is, I end up running into big, heavy things. So having wedges around is a great way uh, 
I, it's just smart. Also, always in my bag is cordage. Now, this is number 36 bank line, which again, I have in multiple bags, multiple cars, things like that, because it is just so useful. It's a high tensile strength string that is kind of tarred, so it bites on itself. It is great, great stuff. Can't rank it, bend it enough. And also, I have paracord in my bag at all times. You guys saw when I was setting up like the perimeter of the actual cabin. Now, what I have in my hands here is an old timey scribe. The new ones actually have a place to hold a pencil or a marker as well as some levels here, which makes it much more accurate and much, much better. I would highly recommend that if you were gonna get involved in this, that that is what you do. However, my dad gave me this, and it means a lot to me to be able to use some old timey type of tools. Like you guys saw me using that two-handed saw early in the build, um, and I use this every single day. Yes, it may not be as accurate, and I have to do different things to make it work, but man, I think it's so cool to use a tool that's like 100 years old, but that is what you guys see me marking to make sure that I get the actual same diameter of the log. I have to measure up to the bottom of the space that I'm gonna be taking out, and then I just trace it, then I remove it with my axes and my chisels, and then hopefully it works out. More randomness are log dogs. Now these are timber tough log dogs that I have not been able to use very much because all the logs that I am building with currently are too big of a diameter for these. So when I move on to the gable as well as some of the roofing type of logs, I probably will be able to use this. and I'll be very, very thankful that I have it. However, right now, I have no opinion because I don't really use it. Something that I just picked up and actually got delivered yesterday are these log dogs. So all that this basically is, is a piece of metal with some points on it, and it's going to hold one side of the log to the already stabilized logs so that hopefully it doesn't rock around as much because as so many of you have said, there has to be a way to hold them still, and this is it. I just did not want to bite the bullet and buy log dogs because, again, I don't have welding skills. I don't have blacksmithing skills yet. Gonna get them. But until I get those, uh, I, I spent $25 or $27 on some bent metal pointy things uh, just to hold the logs in place. So uh, hopefully as I move on to the gable and a little bit more sketchy areas where I need to figure out a ladder situation or scats, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, as I figure that out, uh, it's gonna be very, very important to hold these like six, 700 pound logs in place so that nothing comes tumbling down. Some also really important things are a tape measure. Now this is a Stanley 30 foot tape measure and it's just in my bag all the time because you need to be able to measure things if you're going to build, it just is. Uh, also, you guys always see a pair of deerskin gloves in my back pocket. I actually don't like working with gloves on my hands. Uh, I have a background in carpentry when I was younger working with my dad, he's, he's a carpenter. So um, I, I never work with gloves, I don't dig with gloves, I don't do any work with gloves on my hands. Definitely don't lift with gloves on my hands. But you guys will see me using these when I'm handling logs. And the reason has nothing to do with splinters. I have enough calluses and my hands are beat up enough that I don't really get too many splinters that badly. What this is for is the bugs. Stuff that you guys can't really see on camera is that, number one, the background of the cabin is sheer. It is a super, super steep wall of rock and vegetation but it doesn't really show up on camera. It just looks kind of like a flat green area. And also there are copious amounts of bugs and spiders. So uh, when I'm dealing with logs, especially dead ones, cause I'm only using dead ones for the cabin, uh, I get things crawling on me a lot. And I'm not the biggest fan of the spiders. Don't mind snakes, don't mind really anything else. Uh, but spiders and I kind of want to punch them all in the face. And the gloves give me a little bit of a second reaction time so hopefully I ninja them off before they get to me. I think that's it for the randomness. Oh, last piece of randomness is rope. Uh, just like in Boondock Saints, you never know where you're gonna need it for, but you always end up needing it. If you're gonna work with trees or logs, bring rope. It's just a good idea for safety, for pulling things, for getting things off of people, for what, just bring rope. Now let's talk books. If you guys have watched any videos, you will know that I'm learning this entire process simply through reading. Uh, I've watched a couple videos, but honestly there's not a lot of material and the material that is there really isn't all building by hand. Uh, so it is what it is. So I really, really like learning in this fashion. Now, if you're just looking for basic woodsman-y stuff, bushcraft, I cannot recommend Dave Canterbury's books enough. They are absolutely amazing for that type of thing. Or if you're into like survival manuals and that type of stuff, check out his books, Bushcraft 101, Advanced Bushcraft, uh, just pretty much a series. He does a really, really good job, and there's nothing um, 
really, you're gonna find everything that you need to know here for the average person. Now, as far as building the cabin, these two books have been the main resources that I've used, and as you can tell, they're not very creative with the titles. Now, this one was actually put out by the Forest Service in the early 1900s, and is actually the main book that I've used. It is very, very simple. It has a couple diagrams, some pictures, but it gives you the very, very basics that you need to know. Uh, and obviously it's very, very thing. You can read through the entire thing in less than an hour and have an idea of how this thing is going to go. You're not gonna be great at it. It doesn't go very, very in the detail. It's not gonna answer a lot of your questions, but if you're doing a project as basic as I am doing, this thing has been amazing. Now, this one is actually a lot more detailed and it goes into a lot more of the areas that I'm probably not even going to know, need to know. As you guys can see, it, uh, it gets much more into the weeds than I'm probably gonna need to know for my particular cabin because I'm not planning on living in it. My cabin is going to be a wood store slash survival shelter slash tool shed so I don't need to carry that 70 pound pack. Hopefully it'll be like 60 pounds up and down the hill all the time. But if you guys are interested in this, I, I can't recommend these enough. Definitely pick both these up, read through it. But if you're just gonna get one, get this. Just go through it real fast in an afternoon and find out whether this is something that you think you'd be interested in getting involved in. Sharpening. So a sharp tool is a safe tool. And after every single day of the log cabin build, like I said, on average, it's about seven hours. I have at least two extra hours that night of tool care where I'm just making sure that all the edges are good and clean and polished and everything's taken care of the way that it needs to because I know it might sound counterintuitive to a lot of people, but the sharper that blade is, the more control that you have over of it. If you guys have ever tried cutting with a kitchen knife through a tomato and you actually need to put pressure and saw on a tomato to get through it, that's going to be a dangerous cut because you're not that much in control of that blade. It is much better to have it super sharp so you can do what you need to do and it's even more important when you're talking about huge massive logs that can fall on your face. So when I'm at home and all resources are perfect, I like to sharpen my knives as well as my chisels with Japanese water stones and that works out terrifically. However, when I'm in the field, I don't have that luxury. So what I actually carry in my pack with me is a very, very fine Nicholson axe file. Uh, now I don't actually use that on my axes unless I do something real stupid, which I haven't. So I don't use this on my axes. But I do use this on my draw knife. Uh, I find that the Lansky puck does not work as well on my draw knife, probably because of the really bad edge that I put on it. But if I'm in the field, I can very quickly just run this along the edge a couple times and then I'm back in business for my draw knife. When it comes to my axes, if I've been chopping through a lot of knots or just going through a lot of problems uh, with my tomahawk or my hatchet, then a Lansky puck has been invaluable to me. It has one coarse side and one fine side. And guys, you're able to put a literal, you can shave with your ax if you spend enough time putting a good edge on it with a Lansky puck. Um, and I'm not just saying, you can literally shave with, with your axes if you spend enough time. So that's always in the field with me. And then a really, really cool company called JRE Industries, which is a leather company, which is what you guys see from my sheaths for my knives. You guys have seen this. This is my scout carry that I have on all the time or small the back carry. And this is a hip carry with a dangler. Uh, but that company is who is responsible for making these awesome piece of art and when they actually gave me these they gave me a lot of strapping materials some of them i use at home all of the time literally like every single night but he also gave me this field strap which just rolls up and then has some compound um just so that i keep an edge on whatever i need to keep an edge on while i'm in the field so jre industries if you guys are interested in a custom sheath or some different type of stropping and sharpening materials, man. Uh, can't say enough good things about that company. They are awesome. And then finally, because it gets asked, I wanna tell you guys about the camera equipment that I use to make these videos. As far as the camera goes, guys, I am not a camera dude. I know a lot of people get into the DSLR cameras with the different lenses and stuff. And honestly, it always just seemed overwhelming to me. The settings and everything, it just, it wasn't something that I was really interested in getting involved in. Um, so basically all that I do is camcorders right now this is the one that i just recently broke as you guys can see the uh viewfinders all breaky and wobbly and the the lens only comes up three quarters of the time um so i needed to replace it now i actually just replaced it with the exact camera you guys are watching it's it's this one then that is the sony fdr ax 53 and it can shoot 4k video i typically don't uh upload 4k stuff just because my internet situation i 
I have a hard enough time at McDonald's uploading the videos that I do now. If I made it 4K, I literally, I don't know that work out. But as soon as my internet situation gets better, then hopefully I'll be back to 4K stuff and, and the image will be even nicer. As far as tripods and things like that go, the main one that I use, like literally 99.99% of the time is the Amazon Basics that if you just go to Amazon, it's like 19 bucks or something. The reason why is because I end up breaking them. Whether I am in the gym, stuff gets rolled into it, yokes crush tripods, uh, and then when I'm in the woods, obviously logs hit them, they get knocked over. You guys see the camera get hit with stuff all of the time. So uh, I don't buy very nice because I have bought nice and I've destroyed them very, very quickly. So. I've learned that when it comes to tripods, there's not that much difference, at least for the stuff that I personally do. So I just buy the ones that I can replace pretty easily and you're just as likely to see me stacking this thing up onto a bunch of wood chunks or stones or in the gym in shoes and, and weight plates to get some cool shots than you are any type of decent tripod. That said, I do have this awesome Gorilla Pod. However, I've used it probably like three times and the reason why is because in order to use the basic tripod, I need to keep this bottom piece on the camera and I need to screw this piece in and the two are not adaptable. So basically, if I'm always using the tripod that I always use, I keep this screwed in the bottom of the camera so I can move it and do dumb things, which means this guy just doesn't get used because the transition is too slow. And the latest piece of awesome technology that is gonna be on the channel, which you guys saw a couple shots with on the last Barbells and Bushcraft video, um, is this gimbal for my iPhone. So uh, guys, I have a brain tumor and the brain tumor makes my hands shake. So when I'm doing a lot of the video camera work, it, uh, it gets a little trembly. So I bought this gimbal. I didn't want to buy a gimbal for my actual camera because they're ridiculous. Uh, but I bought this little one for my iPhone so I get a couple of the nature shots and just have a little bit of movement without you guys uh, going Blair Witch on me. So uh, I did add that. I'm gonna keep messing around with it so far. I like it a lot, uh, even though it seems a little smarter than me and I don't control it super well. So yeah, that's camera gear guys. Oh, editing software. Everyone wants to know what I use for editing. Uh, I have a MacBook and I use the free iMovie software. That's it. I, uh, I am not into any type of extra software for my thumbnails, anything like that. It's all free stuff. Guys, you do not need to spend a lot of money to have a YouTube channel. My first probably year of making YouTube, I had a camera from 2008 and it looked like it was like from 2000 and four, six, one. Anyway, guys, it's more about the content and what you can bring and what you can offer the audience. This video is actually being made because my brother-in-law, Jake, I recently saw him for Thanksgiving and he told me that one of my other bushcraft videos where I talked about the tools I was using to do those jobs was super, super useful for him and the links and things. So I told him that I'd do one for the cabin. So Jake, here you go, bud. And to everyone else, I know a lot of you have wanted to use what some of these tools are. And if you guys do need links, it's very, very easy just to go down and click on them, as well as the timestamps. Hopefully, we'll make it easy for you guys to come back and reference any tools that maybe you're looking for at a later time. Hopefully, this was helpful. I always enjoy making the videos. I hope you guys do enjoy watching them. Hopefully, the log cabin continues to make progress as the weather changes and it's gonna get interesting, but it is cool to see the seasons and the vegetation, everything kinda go along as it progresses. So I hope you guys are enjoying this process as much as I am. It's all about the process. I love it. I love your guys' support. I love everything you're doing for me. I will catch up with you later in the week until I do go out to something amazing realize. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other, please. Seriously, like, nice. Nice is better. I'll see you then.